Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Tonga Screw. I'm your host, John Better Knows Dan Roniak. Spending a fantastic show for you. Mounts make waves in the gaming community. POF thoughts on one week later. And a legend comes to life. And much more. But first, let me introduce you to my fellow host. He streams over on Twitch where he answers the age old question. In his journey to gather every legendary, what is he going to do for the real thing? Say hello to age. Wait, what? The real th- huh? What? The real thing, yeah. Um, I guess farm. I I guess hi guys, welcome. We'll definitely have to find out. <laughs> uh, you can see him stream for Guild Mag. Since Mouth and Inks couldn't couldn't make it, I needed someone who was originally here and could be our resident pessimist. Knocking two birds with one stone. Say hello to Aaron. That's that's me, guys. Fill in <laughs> pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> and if you I'm haven't noticed uh, Malthanus and Inks couldn't make it I think Inks is feeling ill so do make sure to send love to him and Mouth had prior engagement so but let us forge on with that ah, forge uh, I didn't even mean to do that one wow. uh, what, are we, what are we like two minutes in he's cunning yeah that's like a new record um, oh man it's not a record, guys. It's it's been worse. Uh, first up, we want to talk about uh, you know, POF launch with mounts, and you know, I think a lot of people leading up to it were worried. I know we were. Um, you know, people finally got their hands on it, but so much so that you know, there's praise not just from the fan base, but also uh, they were one of the I think I believe top trending on r slash gaming, which is the gaming subreddit which basically is every game. And I think it stayed up there for a good long time. I mean, I think it was at like a couple thousand upvotes or something, but uh, yeah, a lot of people are giving praise to, uh, um, you know, the mounts and their style of movement. And I mean, what are your guys thoughts? Are, do you agree with the sentiment? Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, mounts are very different from what traditional MMOs have because traditional MMOs use mounts as a way to get around in terms of in the air or on land, uh, and it was normally faster to get around. Now, mounts do the same thing. They are faster, unless you're a thief, but you can pretty keep up. I've, tr- I've actually done it. It's pretty fun. But uh, the, they actually have different type of movement abilities, which actually helps you get around in different types of content. For example, for Skimmer, you can't go on um, the actual quicksand areas unless you have a Skimmer. For mountainous areas, if you don't have a place to jump off and glide off, you have to use a Springer. For Jackal, there are different areas you can blink around corners to get to different locations raptor there's huge canyons you could jump off of to gap to jump off huge gaps things like that um so it's actually very cool that mounts have that specific usefulness to them and i actually keep buying in all my mounts to a uh, different key so that i can quickly swap in between mounts because they are different uses in different situations so i can quickly swap from like raptor to get into a different area swap to springer so i could jump up and things like that it's great i love mounts in this game yeah uh mounts are guys don't get me wrong mounts are really good but um and so they're really good at first glance right like you get on your mount you're like wow this is smooth this is fluid and then you try to stop and you're like, I, that didn't work the way I thought it would. And then you try to do jumping things with your mount, and you slide off, and you're just kind of sliding down a cliff face as a bunny mm-hmm. repeatedly. And uh, you very quickly realize that these mounts are a little janky. Like, they're... Uh, the my biggest complaint with mounts is the jackal portals. Those don't work half the time. Yeah, I agree with that. Like I'm constantly just face planting into a jackal portal. Like, oh, it didn't trigger. Fantastic. But well, I've had the, problems where like, I would stay there for a little while and then be like, okay, it didn't work. Start to try to turn around. Then I get teleported. I'm like, wait, what? 
Yeah. Have you ever tried to turn around on a mount? It's yeah. it is, it's a disaster. <laughs> like, I mean, to their you're... credit, they feel like they're actual entities that you're trying to control, unlike you know WoW and stuff where it just feels like I just, it's part of your I character. Feel, I feel like they should be like these are intelligent enough creatures to where they should be able to pivot effectively. That's all I'm saying. Like I mm. feel like I feel like my raptor should be able to pivot instead of whatever it is that it's trying to do when I want to turn around. But other no, those are just nitpicks though for the most part. Like if you play them enough, you'll learn how to get past that kind of stuff really quick. It, yeah, it definitely has so, a learning curve from other mounts of other games. It's you know. Yeah, yeah that's the that stuff aside, they're they're so fantastic for movement. Like uh chat was saying the Raptor Canyon leap is it's broken. <laughs> like it's it feels you feel like you're cheating when you're using the Raptor Canyon leap to get across terrain. It's it's absolutely nuts. Yeah, I love them. Overall, I totally love them. Yeah. Um I will say though the the one thing is like the one thing I have a problem with is if I'm in like I just want to turn slightly in a closed environment like a close space mounts kind of aren't that great in that in that respect because there's that um hero point uh the top right of crystal oasis where it, where you have to go up like a branded pyramid and mm-hmm. like i tried to go up on a, on my jackal it's like no i i swapped the springer because it, it was i tried easier. i tried to go up on the springer and i couldn't do it i just i just legged it up the, up the branded pyramid that was yeah. the easiest way for me. I kept sliding off on any of the mounts. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess this is as close to a spoiler as we're going to get. I mean, I don't think it is, because if you are in these new zones, I'm sure you have seen them already. Is the fifth mount that they really didn't show off. And I, I see chat talking about mount? it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is the Griffin Mount, um, and I saw chat saying that apparently Mo has come out to say that like twenty five thousand people have already gotten it, and like, which is yeah. insane because wow. for people that don't yeah. know, you have to do like a bunch of collections for it, and also two hundred fifty gold. So good money sink. Um, but uh, I saw also oh people were saying like yeah if you didn't feel if you f- if you feel like the uh, Raptor was kind of cheaty and you know. How do you feel about that Griffin? I mean, that has so so the Griffin. I uh, I unlocked the Griffin mount a couple days ago, um, and I actually don't have a problem believing that so many people have it already because what's going on right now in the maps is the community is actually really coming together to help people get this mount. Um, if you look in your LFG tool, there are parties and there are squads in every map that are going through each map doing all the Griffin stuff. Um, to get it unlocked for everybody. And that's kind of the main way people are unlocking it so quickly right now is because commanders are running people through the collections, um, which is pretty cool. I got a lot of help from squads unlocking mine. Huh. Um, so right, if you're going to do it right now is the time to do it because those squads, they'll probably continue throughout the longevity of the game, but they're definitely going to dwindle in frequency as we get farther and farther out from launch. So yeah. get your Griffin mount now while the getting's good. I actually have been just running around and just doing them as as they come. So there was like a legendary in Crystal Oasis that's a fight. I just randomly ran there and there was already a group fighting. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. There was a champion I had to fight. One person already started to fight. I was like, oh, okay, cool. There was the Dead House event that I have to do. Um, and I'm like, Oh, there's only three people here. I'll tag up and see if we get people to come. Like 15 people show up. It's, it's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. And, so. yeah. and chat, you are right. 25,000 is a small percentage compared to supposedly the millions that are playing. But I'm curious to know that's 25,000 completed it. That means 25,000 people paid 250 gold. And did the I'm curious of how many people are at, maybe are are on their way like on the collections. I think that's going to be a bigger number. Yeah. yeah, the uh, so I think it's like I thought it was a steep gold gate for a mount, but um, people be getting it. Like, 
I, I guess a lot of people just have 250 gold laying around. I crafted a legendary before the launch, so I didn't have 250 gold laying around. I had to really scrounge for it, which sucks. Sell all the mats. Yeah, no, I liquidated. Like, it was it was painful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's oh. basically what Chad's saying now. Like, if you want to stock up on stuff, probably buy it now. Like, alone they're saying the uh, Elderwood Mithril has kind of dropped getting the Shining Blade Legendary Sword down like a thousand gold. Like, yeah. There, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of tier six mats you can get from these new zones. So I'm definitely curious to see how this is going to affect the economy overall. Oh, uh, have more uh, gold tier five, tier, everything tier five is tanked. They tanked on launch day. Like it was, it was nuts. <laughs> yeah. Cause all the bounties and just give a lot of loot bags and actually just pathfire itself. He has a lot of loot bags. So I would, I wouldn't surprise me if things dropped a lot. Yeah, um, chat pointed out something that I had noticed the other day. Or, or Calcum Ore is under a silver right now. Jeez. An ancient wood, I would believe too, would be pretty like low a, as well. It's like one ninety, I think. Ancient wood is, which is really low for ancient wood. Yeah, everything's taking a dive. Well, because this, uh, there are also a lot more T six gathering nodes in these new maps. Than, a lot. Yeah, like they're very frequent, um, and a lot of them are rich nodes too. So. That's really good. I'm sure the prices will even out as they continue to release more sinks for stuff. Yeah. I I'm I'm gonna I'm pretty much gonna try to farm and stock up on materials I'll need for more legendary stuff, but because uh, you know get stuff while it's good. So Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'll probably do like more of the T five, T six mats because T5 is actually pretty expensive when it comes to totems and I think bones too. So Yeah, the uh the like um the fine materials are still pretty pricey, but the all the basic materials is where the crash really Yeah. Is. Cause people are gonna be making gear still. So they're gonna like they're gonna make all the new uh armor and things like that. And there's also the new inscriptions that you know and insignias that people want to make so yeah those those will stay relatively the same if not go up a bit but yeah yep economic fun times it's a shame we didn't have inks here for economics yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh wow chat's, chat's stocking up they're, they're sounding like you age last week with the uh cormier things buying twenty thousand yeah. mithril ingots and elder i did make profit off of that by the way it, I bought I bought eyes of Cormier when they were nine copper, and they went up to as high as thirty six. Nice. I um, I've been selling them for a pittance just to get them out of my inventory. Well, <laughs> you can actually you can. There's a consumable item for eyes of Cormier, the Griffin thing that you get. Mm. Oh, is there? Yeah the 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 very first item that you get, the mm -hmm. that looks like a. Of like a the, the, the sprocket thing, sprocket the, thing. Yeah. yeah, that that consumes eyes of Cormier. Oh, nice! I didn't even realize that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, kind of chats hidden that's upon, it. and since you know that's the one thing we haven't talked about, how is the rest of the game world faring with now mounts in the in the system? When I, when I have to do a Vista viewer, I just call my Springer. <laughs> I yeah. just go, <laughs> yeah, uh, like if gliding didn't make Quarteria easy mode already, like mounts, mounts make it the kiddie pool. Like it's just <laughs> Quarteria is a joke. I was I was in Blaze Ridge Steps for event completer the other day, and I didn't even waypoint anywhere. I just raptored everywhere just to get from event to event, and it was so fast. Like. Yeah, Cortier is really a joke at this point. <laughs> yeah, I I kind of like it because it makes dailies a little easier. Because if you want to do like, for example, lumber or forager, you just hop on a mount and then just quickly like look around on your mini map. And it's like, oh, there's a node, and then hop on your mount again. Oh, there's a node. For Vista Viewer, Springer is pretty good. For puzzles, 
mounts are generally pretty good. I, I've seen griffins just flying in or springers jumping up or things like that. There was one puzzle, uh, what was it? It was the pirate one in Harathi, the, the pirate ship that's in that cave. Mm -hmm. And there's a... Uh, there's two parts. There's two parts before you actually get to the cave. So, it was the you have to place rocks on buttons. There are three buttons, and then there's that the cave where you have to carefully jump over rocks in order to yeah. get to the other side. I just I just used my raptor and just jumped I right saying, over. I, I did the same thing. Uh, it was <laughs> like one of the dailies. That entire mechanic and, right away. And I think I saw like I think someone was doing it that wasn't like maybe didn't have pof or something yet or one of the re like they were just standing there normally or they didn't even think of it and i just hopped on i was like i can hop on my mount i hopped on the raptor and i went Froo! as they were as yeah. they were trying to run across i'm like see ya yeah i felt i just laughed the entire time it was going back was, uh, yeah i think they need to if they want them to still be challenging in the sense to yeah. go back through with a fine tooth comb because like chat saying trolls revenge in LA, you can do it in five minutes with Springer. Same thing happened uh, the daily that's today, which is uh, um, Jalice's Jalice jump. Yeah, in a snow snowblind. Yeah, Snowden. Yeah, Snowden. Snowden yeah. dress. You can just literally go to the end part and use the Springer. And I... what they need to do is they have to they they do say no mounts, but they need to extend that bit to more towards the entrance of the puzzle. So that the mounts are, are taken off if they really want to invalidate mounts for those areas. Yeah. 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 I mean, over but, overall, I think they're they're good though, good yeah. for the game overall. Because like we've had five years to play through all that all that stuff already, right? Like. I mean, it kind of, and if you're a new player, right, you're not going to have the mounts unlocked, so they'll still get to experience that content, at least a good portion of that content, organic, organically as it was originally meant to be. So, ultimately, it's not too big of a deal. Yeah, it's for it's mostly impacts new players, I would mm. say. If anything. Yeah, but uh, I don't know, like if well, new players are. Right now, probably do have Path of Fire, so um, for the most part, unless they're trying out the game, in which case, jumping puzzles aren't the biggest issue, I would say. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. you got to keep in mind not everyone's a bad player. Well, and plus, oh. not everybody. Like, actually, I would, I would go as far as to say most people don't enjoy uh, jumping puzzles, but not everyone enjoys jumping puzzles, so. For, yeah, for people who don't really want to mess with that, like it's kind of nice to just be able to spring her through it. Like I, me, and, I hate jumping. That's off, my. So. That, that's ultimately the point. Is depending on what, if 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 they're fine with it being that way, or if they want to preserve the idea of jumping puzzles, that's what they d would need to look at or do. But you know, yeah, if if they're fine with you know people shortcutting the jumping puzzles, I mean, granted, two blues and a green isn't a huge deal. <laughs> So, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm all for, really you know, gonna, making them just because yeah. I'm literally only going to it when it's a daily at this point. But those I, those platinum know. doubloons, man. That's what yeah. it's all about. Mm. It, it really depends on what arena it wants on it. I mean, I'm okay with it either way, to be honest. Yeah, I honestly, I forget to use my mount in core maps a lot, but I've been doing better with it since I've been using it so much in the desert. It's becoming it's becoming addicting. Like it's becoming something I can't live without. I gotta I gotta be up on that mount. Yeah. Um well, you know, like we're talking about kind of the POF's effect on the core game. Um, you know, let's hop back into POF itself and kind of the other things that uh, stem from it now that we've had more of a handle on the story because I know last week we tried to talk as much as possible literally one day in we're still not going to do spoilers but um like how how did, have you guys enjoyed the story now that you've had probably a week to play did you finish it all like how long roughly did it take you type thing 
was a good size for an expansion? Um, I finished it yesterday. I will say right now I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. It probably will go down to 9 out of 10 because there are, there are some parts of the story where I could be nitpicky, I guess. Um, but, uh, and there's, in retrospect, as, as I, as I go through it and well, which I'll probably do next week, are probably some things that I, I found that could have been done better or differently. But overall, I think the story was pretty solid in terms of the delivery. And I think all the encounters were uh, pretty good as well. They had uh, what was very different about these encounters from other expansions or is that they're following kind of the living story format of having interesting encounters, not just like you just walk up and press one. You actually have to dodge. You have to look and see different mechanics and things like that. That's what I actually really enjoyed the most. Like the very um, first big encounter, I, I won't say what it is, but I found that was the most interesting one because it, would, it had a decent health pool, but you still had to handle all these different things that were going on. It was, it was actually a lot of fun. Um, there was one encounter I, I've heard a lot of people have a problem with. Again, I won't say what it is because it actually, it's a, it is an interesting encounter, but you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't see a problem with that encounter, personally. I, I did it in one shot. I heard that for some people it was actually a bug that they were experiencing with that. Okay, that encounter. might explain it because um, if it's if yeah. if it's the one we're all talking about, I think Red Wolf warned me about it when I was streaming about it. He's like, "Oh, this is the thing, you know, I can't wait. I'm waiting." And I was like, "Oh, this is the thing you're talking about." And so I was like, kind of mentally prepped. He didn't tell me any of the specifics or anything, but you know, I was mentally prepped that this was gonna be hard. And all of a sudden, I'm just like at the end, like. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. So without spoiling anything about the story in that encounter, um, some people weren't able to dodge um, the main mechanic, and which completely, which kind of makes the fight like impossible if you yeah. don't have if you don't have high enough DPS. So certain people with low DPS builds who got that bug literally couldn't complete it. And um, luckily that didn't happen to me, and I was able to do it fine. I didn't pick up on how to do it for like a good 10 minutes though. So I was raging pretty hard before I finally, <laughs> before I finally figured it out. I was like, how do I, how do I make this stop? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, no, once you, once you get it, it's fine. Yeah. I, I think all I did was DPS. And when I saw the mechanic happening, I'm just like disengaged, like 2000 range. And I just come right back in. That's how I handle it. I didn't break or anything. Yeah, I was playing on a base guardian, um, so my DPS wasn't super high. So I kind of had to, I kind of had to play play the mechanic, but it went fine. No, the story overall, though, um, it's there's a common misconception that it's the best story arena it has ever done. It's not because of Winds of Change and Guild Wars One, but it's the. <laughs> It's <laughs> although in the context of Guild Wars Two, actually, I really did. In like Guild it. Wars Two, it is the best thing they've ever done. Definitely, it's definitely the best thing they've ever done. That being said, um, as Deo and I were kind of discussing before the show started, there are some serious letdowns in the narrative crafting, and some things that just don't pay off um, in ways that they very much could have been could have paid off. Um, if they'd structured the story differently. So for me, I would, it's a 7 out of 10 for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say somewhere around, a, like I was going to say originally 8 out of 10. Like, I don't think it's a perfect story, but once we get into, like, you know, actual spoil like spoilers and then possibly next if, week or so, mm, you know, when we do. There are, like, I'll that has some of the best moments in the, in the whole yes. franchise, though, like, as far as like big like wow moments, it's got some of the very best stuff they've ever done. My, yeah. If you convince me, I might bump it down to eight point five. Eight point five. <laughs> yeah, because I I don't know I I actually really like the story, but I again I have to go through it all and see. I I I do agree that there's some things that could have been done differently to make the story better, but for well maybe we'll talk to you after the show about it, yeah. but. Because 
yeah i, I don't know i i, I kind of felt bad like everybody's like 10 out of 10 is the best story ever and i'm like am i just ha, have i become aaron no <laughs> it because it, i i well for me from a from us from an overall arching like the the delivery of the story the the fight encounters maybe it was just the fight encounters i really enjoyed but i i think it was a solid uh i think it was solid that's why i gave it a 10. oh when i say seven i mean just from a purely narrative standpoint um the encounters were all really good like they're all very well all very well designed all very fun to play i found myself besides that one fight that i just needed to figure out I wasn't frustrated with any of the story encounters. They were all, I mean, some of them, and some of them were tough too, like not super tough, but tough enough to be like, oh wow, I'm playing a game. Whereas a lot of the living world stuff is like so face roll, you're just like, what am I even, I might as well press F. <laughs> like, so yeah, I like the medium they found between uh, passable and challenging with okay. story encounters. Oh no, I, I'm slightly worried by what Mac is saying because I I can't wait to see more of these. They like they, they think they enjoyed Hot Story more. It's like no, you got to oh. remember what Hot Story was like. But I mean, I like I said, it was a different per perspect take on it. But uh, I mean, I'm not gonna tell somebody like I'm not gonna tell somebody that they can't like uh, one story better than the other. Right? For me, the yeah. Heart of Thorns story had no. It had no driving, uh, like there was one driving thing about it that was kill Mordremoth. Beyond that, most of what we actually do in the story instances in Heart of Thorns is filler content. Whereas I felt like in the Path of Fire story, there was a driving force behind what we were doing in every instance. And I understood why we were doing it and none of it seemed particularly out of place for our overall goal. And I, I just felt like it had more focus and more cohesion compared to the Heart of Thorns story. And that's mm -hmm. that's what I think sets it leaps and bounds above Heart of Thorns in terms of narrative. And I think the mechanical encounters in Path of Fire are very superior to the ones in Heart of Thorns. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree with that. Also, I'm kind of curious, like I see chat saying it was roughly the same time length. For me, I think it took longer, but I also think that um, we got to take into account that I think POF had a better flow to it. Like I never had to really grind for any of the masteries to progress the story. Whereas hot, if you're taking that into a consideration of how long it took you, where it's like, go, you know, if, if you didn't plan right, you were grinding a lot more, but if you somehow knew ahead of time or, you know, heard some things, it's like you could kind of plot a trajectory to have a little bit better. But a lot of those times I'd be like, Oh, I caught up with the story. I need to finish this ma this mastery line and you know have enough mastery points. Yeah, um, I think in terms of chapters and playable instances, they're roughly the same. Um, but the difference between the actual instances in Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire is the Path of Fire instances are so much more substantial than the Heart of Thorns story instances. There's so much more um, content packed into each instance. In Path of Fire than there is in Heart of Thorns. And that I think adds length per instance that you're playing. And so I think if you were to play them side by side, um, I think you would find that the Path of Fire story would generally take the average gamer longer to get through than Heart of Thorns. If we're taking out masteries, like let's say you're playing at max mastery. Yeah. I I think it I think POF may have felt longer just due to the maps themselves because I found myself be getting immersed in the maps a lot more than, than this. Just, I always got sidetracked oh, yeah. because of the maps. So, um, or uh, like bounties or whatever. I, I, that's why it took me a little longer. Um, but uh, I think they're relatively the same length. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree, Age. I map completed the whole X-Pack before I finished the story. Like... I yeah. tried really hard to. I tried so hard to be like, I'm just gonna do the story and then I'll do map completion. I couldn't do it. I was I was way more interested in exploring. Because for me, like in an MMO, I don't care about the because you can't it's so much harder to do cohesive narrative in an MMO than in a single player RPG. So I don't um care as much about the story in an MMO as the world building. And the maps were all about that in POF. 
And so that's why I was like, I'm going to explore. <laughs> because the maps just, <laughs> they bring it out in you. Even if you're not super explorer you like, they're just, they kind of mm-hmm. set you off. And, and they allow you to explore. Like with Hot, it was a bunch of meta maps where it's like, you can't get in there right now. It's like, oh my but God, I Hot. want to go in there right now. <laughs> like, you know you know what's interesting about Heart of Thorns? So one thing I've been doing, I was doing coming up to the launch of POF was I was completing Heart of Thorns maps on all my characters. And that map completion is so much less annoying if you have all the hero points done. Like if you proof of heroics all your hero points... Tangled Depths is a chill time. Like, map completing that, it's it's breezy if you don't have to do the hero points. It's absolutely nuts how much hero points factor into the annoyance of Heart of Thorns map completion. It's crazy. Yeah. I, yeah, I am actually really happy that they made the hero points in Path of the Fire, like, soloable. Soloable, yeah, exactly. Um, the veteran fights, some of them are decent, like, none of them are particularly hard, but some of them are challenging enough to be like, oh, you know, I played a game, uh, whereas, and, but you don't have to wait for somebody to come help you with it, which is nice because I like to play at my own pace. It could be annoying when someone drags a sand shark and a sand lion to you, but yeah. Last night, I think I was helping uh, Arlie try to get some hero points in the first area, and one of the, I, I, I think it was a the gin or whatever that you have to start fighting. And so all of a sudden, yeah. I just get started raining down with fireballs, and I see another player coming to help us who brought a Hydra with them. I'm like, jeez. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Can we but talk yeah. a bit about the, the mobs that, that are in POF? Because, like, Hydras are no joke. Like, Yeah, they can mess you up if you're not on top of it. Well, here's the thing about Hydras. They're they're not as hard as they were in Guild Wars. Like, get, comparatively, yeah. like, Guild Wars 1 Hydras were a nightmare, whereas Guild Wars 2 Hydras are like, you don't want to fight one because it's going to take a long time, but they're, all their mechanics are pretty easy to avoid, I think. Mm-hmm. Have you fought one of the, the bounty ones? No, I haven't done the bounty Hydras. Yet. Try fighting one. <laughs> oh, my. Is it, there's, is it bad? there's one that, that, ha- that spawns healing orbs. So if you don't kill the healing orbs, it'll heal back up. Or if you don't have enough DPS, well, I was say, we can talk about the we it can talk about insane. the bounties in a second. But um, since we were still talking about, like slightly about like the map and masteries and here uh, uh-huh. all that stuff, I do want to point back to what Chat was saying before of and we we I think we said it before the, even the show was we like I know personally for me I'm so glad there's no masteries in those adventures. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I'm like, real talk though, since there's no masteries tied to the adventures, I'm not going to do them. Like, I, that's I the only reason I, would... I, that's the only reason I do adventures for mastery points. Like going Where's back to adventures? one of the, like never having to feel like I had to grind for one of the masteries. I think I needed like one, like a little bit more XP when I was helping some, like doing an event. And I was like, oh, there's an instant adventure here. And I was like, uh, I, I, when I walk up to him, I'm like. Oh, I'll try to get one of the masteries for it or something. I look, I'm like, there's no mastery? I'm like, well, I can get the XP. I did the XP. I was like, I actually did one that I wanted to do, not just for a freaking mastery point. So, That's good, though I yeah. do agree with Chad, I'd like, like earlier, uh, I'd like to see maybe like more varied ones. I haven't got to play all of them, but more varied ones like we had in Hot for the people that want, you know, different things out of them, but. One yeah. interesting one interesting thing I noticed about the mastery point acquisition was no mastery points in the uh, alternate achievements on the story quests. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, that's true. Huh. Yeah. Zero. Zero. And so you never have to replay story for mastery points, basically. Which is, I like that because I'm not an achievement hunter. Um, but I think. I just think it kind of it gives less incentive to go do those achievements for people who like doing it. I don't know. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think if there are because I was looking through it earlier. I looked at my the, the, what I saw is I looked at my achievement panel at the story achievements and none of them had the little mastery icon next to them, which means that it's available. Um, and I didn't really focus on doing the achievements as I did the story. So there might I might have 
gotten the mastery point ones as I did it, but I don't think I did. But, uh, sure. chat, the important thing to note, you know, like you're saying, if you don't like them, don't do them, go do the hot ones. Hot is not required for POF. Not everybody's going to have Heart of Thorns necessarily, which was always my one issue with how they did this, desi you know, design thing. So that's, that is definitely important to note that some people might not have the option to, yeah. you know, have the event. Um, yeah. I kind of want to go back a little higher to uh, someone commented about desolation and it's uh, asked us if it was a pain to go through. Um, at first it was, if you don't have skimmer. You need, yeah, you want to have the skimmer. Yeah, you want to have the skimmer for desolation. For I sure. would say. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it, if you want to map complete it, that is. Like, you need the skimmer, I think, to map complete mm -hmm. some of it. But yeah. if you're just trying to get through it for the story, it's actually not any worse than the other maps. The only thing about it is, like, guys, they did a really good job at making the undead super, the the awakened super annoying. Because they put, like, we've never had slow applied to us on this level before by, like, open world mobs. And it's, except maybe by chalk, and it's, like, it's really obnoxious. <laughs> I... I personally am not used to mobs reflecting. I've actually got down twice because I didn't notice that the mobs were I'm like, oh, I have to watch out for that now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've easily found the Awakened to be the annoying mob of uh, of this expansion, for sure. Uh, I hate Forge Forerunners, the ones that are like on Surfer. Oh, the Silver Surfer guys? Yeah. Yeah. They're all... I they're hate just, those ones. I feel like. I feel like they're douchey. Like they're, <laughs> they're they're riding around to you and they're like doing this with their hands like they're like they're hot shit and and you're just like stop it. Can you not do that? That's you're being a douchebag right now. It, it, oh, it's man. your friend that just got a seg when he's showing it off. It's like, "All right, dude, I get it." He's just like doing yeah, circles exactly, around you. Yeah, exactly. It's like yeah, he's like, Ew, look at my surfboard." And I'm like, "I'm I'm mm. going to kill you." <laughs> Right. I, I think we should be able to do if we immobilize them while they're on their like little surfing me mechanism. It should like do a knockdown on them. Like they should be able to like fall yeah. off. It's actually it's really satisfying to see see them while they're doing their like the thing where they go around you because yeah again they're like look at me I'm cool you can't get me and it's like <laughs> Guardian Shield five what's up <laughs> nice uh, so what's your favorite map POF map so far. Ooh. Oh man! Yeah, that's right. Choose one. That's Even if you have, and chat, you can you can choose yours as well. I mean, I mean they're. I, I like them all. Um, probably for nostalgia's sake, I like the one. Uh, uh, which one's the one with the uh, augury rock is. Elon Riverlands. Yeah. Elon Riverlands. Like, there's just so much there. But a lot of time, like, I find I'm, like, for some reason, questing a lot in Crystal Oasis. I don't know why. I got, I played that during the beta. I'm, like, so annoyed. I'm, like, go to other maps. I'm, like, I find myself back there. I don't know why. Maybe Crystal it's because... Oasis has a lot of set pieces. Yeah. Um, like, it's got the Temple of Cormier. It has Amnoon. It has the Pyramids. It has... That jumping puzzle down there that's pretty wild with the gin, and then it's got um, the branded pyramid. Like it's got a lot. It's got a lot of variation in its set pieces. See, mm -hmm. once again, it's like I, I'm like reading through. It's like people saying desert highlands, and also they're saying because uh, of the Shiver Peak section. And I'm like, oh, I do like it for that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you well, know, I mean, Vobby, like some of the events in Vobby, some, like not so much the hearts, which we'll probably get to those. Um, you know. Some of the events in there are so interesting. Like, well, Vobby has, like, as a recreation of Guild Wars 1, Vobby and the Desolation are just so perfect from that perspective. Like, yeah, that's true. They nail the atmosphere of what they were in the first game while at the same time being Guild Wars 2 maps. Yeah. And it's it's very 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 well done. Um, yeah, Are like really? the landscapes of the desolation, the structures in Vavi, dude. The Garden of Saboran 
next level, man. Oh man, now now I want to. Ch- no, I'm, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I can't, dude. I don't have. I don't have an answer for you. I genuinely I, don't like. <laughs> I'm going to go with Desert Highlands. Uh, kind of like most of chat, but mostly because of the Tomb of Primeval Kings. Is that? Oh, that's another great reason is. to like that one. <laughs> you know, Primeval Kings. Um, what's inside the branded area in Desert Island? Desert Highlands is pretty neato. Um, I, yeah, the snowy really, area is pretty cool. The waterfall. I, I really like that area. Just because I've had a lot of good runs back in Guild Wars One there, so it's just. All it's just very nostalgic. Yeah, no. Uh, Tomb of the Primeval Kings is my first ever experience with like end game content in an MMORPG. Was Tomb of the Primeval Kings Guild Wars One for sure? Yeah, I'm, in, I'm in Guild Wars One, everybody. Hoping. If you're ready to type in the comments, what a noob that was! Open world. That's not end game. Yeah. I think he's talking about Guild Wars One. So Guild yeah. Wars One. Yeah, I, I I secretly hope that there's a raid. That that will let us go back into those areas because I, oh man, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't surprise, it wouldn't surprise me because of uh, part of the Griffin collection is, and this isn't a story spoiler, um, is going back to the Primeval Kings and accessing the Mist Portal to go somewhere else in the Mist. So they could totally use that mechanic to uh, to make an excuse for you to use that as a raid again. So it's yeah. it's definitely possible. To go to like the Hall of Heroes or something for a raid. Uh, I want to. Yeah. It might have changed like 250 years later. I mean, never know. Could be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and I did open all the chests in the tomb. I I literally port to different things so I don't fight, and I just open all the chests. Hmm. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, I, 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 it's so hard to pick your favorite. I think it's. I guess, I guess, from a nostalgic Guild Wars one, I totally understand that it's it's really hard to pick a favorite. Also, from the looks and feels, the look and feel of each map, I, I guess it's also hard to choose. But I'm I'm going to stick with Desert Highlands, mostly because it's a tomb, and it's also very diverse in its landscape. So that's why I'm going to go with that. I'm so torn because I want to say Vobby for the architecture there. Like, guys, have you been to the Kodash Bazaar? Like, have you yeah. been to Joko's Sky Garden? Dude, it's the most insane set piece they've ever put in the game. Like, period. Ever. I have, yeah, I haven't. I've been through, like, half of Vobby, so I can't really say. Like, but the Necropolis? Like, I did go to the Boneyard, dude. But at the same time, I hate the hearts in Vobby <laughs> so much. That being said, like, if we're excluding the hearts, Vobby is definitely my favorite. Um, but I think with hearts included, it's either got to be Crystal Oasis or Desert Highlands because they have the least hearts. Because uh, I don't like hearts. But I'll, go, I'll say Vobby because um, that one blew me away the most out of all the maps. Vobby. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna have to stay with Elon, but like I said, I all, all of them have great, like, are great in their own way. It's, but yeah. yeah. Oh, they knock the every map is a home run for sure. Every map is a home run. Yeah. So since Aaron brought up hearts, I guess we'll go to hearts. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably a good idea. So, you know, they kind of brought they brought hearts back for Living Story season three. They continued that in the expansion I, I i know i've kind of said my thing on hearts for living story season three that hasn't changed but uh where you like what are your guys thoughts on the hearts i'm impartial when it comes to hearts i don't mind doing them i only do them if i want map completion or if i want to buy something off of vendor um uh, so I I I'm really neutral when it comes to hearts. I guess I hate hearts. <laughs> I I hate them so much. They're in my opinion, they're some of the most objectively poor, like not fun content in the game. They're just very tedious. And what path of fire? Path 
path. What Path of Fire has done with hearts is make them even more tedious with the tasks you have to do, because a lot of them you can't kill stuff to do the heart. A lot of them are tasks only, and the tasks you have to do in a lot of them are really tedious. And then on top of that, the hearts fill more slowly than ever before in the history of the game. And it's just, it's a, it's a nightmare for people who don't like doing t tedious crap. And I guess ArenaNet thinks people like doing tedious crap. I don't know. I I hated all the heart, every heart I did in this expansion I hated. And none more so than the hearts in Vobby. Like, they're, they're just so bad. So terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I I just think they were a sad excuse to put in daily quests when from like other games. And granted they oh. are better than other games daily quests, but they are just daily quests. I mean, like chat was saying, "Oh, I only do it so I can buy this, you know, a key from it, you know, once a day." It's like once again, he, there there's your reward, but you actually have to pay for that reward. <laughs> weirdly enough, it's but like do you well, do you feel forced to do the hearts as a daily? I don't because no, I, I do not want to. <laughs> you, you have to. There are several instances where you do have to do them, though. You have to do them if you want the Griffin Mount. You have to do them if you want map completion. You have to do them if you want something from the vendor. And um, I just think that there the amount of time you spend doing a heart because it's going to take like as tedious as they are. They take twenty minutes tops for maybe the worst ones. Really? What the hell are you doing wrong? No, Jeez. like, <laughs> no, you can do 20 you, minutes to do a heart. The average heart is going to take you like five to 10 minutes. But if you're may, like, maybe you're not a player that's as good at reading into mechanics in the game and you choose the most objectively tedious way to do the heart, you know, like some players aren't playing these optimally and you could have a really bad experience with one. And at the rate these fill up in this game, yeah, you could take like upwards of 15 minutes to do a heart. No joke. It takes me like five minutes max. Yeah, but that's because you know how to do, like you know how to play the game. Somebody who doesn't know how to play the game as well might not be able to fill up the heart as quickly. Well, you just read what to do. And there, okay, but so... a lot of times it would like fill up like a little chunk of it and it's like okay don't do that one because that one's basically pointless like I, I've had that on some of the hearts like where it's like okay l let me do this one task because it fills up more of the bar okay I know, but... I'm gonna, I'll explain how to do how I do hearts so w whenever I come across a new heart I read what the heart does like it tells you like different things you could do to complete the heart um I try to do like each bit of the 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 parts of the heart I'll take the most that fill up the bar the fastest. So, for example, when you go into Elon Riverlands, there's a heart near Argy Rock where you t uh, like touch forbidden relics and you know kill bobs and stuff. So, what I did for that heart is that I kill half the mobs in order to collect forbidden reliquaries. Wait till it's halfway, and I just hand in all the relics, and I'm done. It takes three minutes, tops. It's, it, I, I, I want to watch you. I want to watch you do that in three minutes because I don't believe you. I you have to kill full berserker. You'd have to, you'd have to kill maybe five or six vet, five or six of the veteran gins to get the hearts ha heart halfway up. You can do that in three minutes. You can yeah. only pop them one at a time. They run away from you. And I I killed them in like what ten seconds? It's not that bad. Ten seconds for a veteran gin. Yeah. The ones that run away, right? Yeah, the ones you pop from the Forgotten Statues. Yeah, CC, and then you just kill them. I don't think you can kill one in 10 seconds. I'm full berserker. I can see Age doing it, but, you know. I, I don't, don't think, think you can do that hard in three minutes. Oh man! Even if you even if you can, most players aren't going to be doing okay, that. Well, we, well, I guess the average player can't. But like you're an excessively experienced player. I like you're coming up on thirty k AP age. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. most players are not going to be doing that hard in three minutes, and it's. And I feel like if you just need something from the vendor, the amount of time you spend doing a heart, whether it takes you five minutes or fifteen minutes, those are both tiny amounts of time. And I just feel like, why? 
Like, why do I need to spend, if it's five minutes, why do I need to spend that time at all? Like, it's just, mm -hmm. it's just a stupid little tedious barrier when the real, the real work is attaining the currency. So like, why do I also have to do the heart on top of that? Hmm. Okay, I can see it from that perspective of, you just want to talk to the vendor because you want to buy something, but it's like, oh, I have, I'm prevented because I have to do this first. I understand from that perspective, and it's especially tedious if it's a daily because it just resets and you have to do it over again. I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Would you would you prefer if it was just like a one time heart instead of a yeah, daily? I mean that would be better that would be better than daily, but I just I that was one of the things I actually liked about the Heart of Thorns maps was the lack of hearts. Hmm. Like I think doing things with the like the map currency vendors in Heart of Thorns, like the work the work, the gameplay is in attaining the map currency. I that's where I the was... investment comes from. I was truly hopeful because when they went into hot and had no hearts, like they were kind of continu continuing that idea of hearts were meant to sh as a guide guide rail for people. Like this is where events normally kick off and then follow the events. They did that in or, you know, you didn't have hearts anymore. And then they continued that in hot when they brought them back. Like I said, when they brought them back in season three and then continued it, I'm just like, and then, made them daily that's a whole different issue but hearts i'm just like do people really need their hand held that much to just go into a map and go fill something heart. over there da, 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 da. it's like well and chats and chat saying so you'd rather just have a vendor nothing to unlock the vendor yes, <laughs> yes I, would. I would instead of doing some tedious bs for five minutes so i can just use the vendor anyway like it's such a pointless amount of time to make me spend on something every time I want to use that vendor. I feel like what I think what I would like is a vendor, but if you complete the heart and this is not a daily situation, this is like a one time heart fill. If you complete the heart, it would unlock a special panel that would allow you to buy even more things like specific things from that heart. I think that's I mean, what I would like more. And at the end of the day, when I say I hate hearts, they're I just find them really annoying. Like they're not a game breaking feature or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quitting the game over them. That's no, uh, exactly. Like like at the end of the day, it's a it's a nit. Not liking hearts is a nitpick. I just I yeah. find them really annoying. For, yeah, That's for me, it's one of the more weaker the points I, that I yeah. dislike. But I'm not gonna. It's not a game yeah. breaker. So they're just annoying. That's all it is, really. Yeah, that's. Uh, I learned something today. Uh, I did. I I honestly didn't think it would. It takes people fifteen minutes to do a heart. That's actually really surprising for me. Yeah, no, because I just I feel like new players, newer players, even if you read all those things, you might not be able to find like go to something and find figure out how to engage with it. Like a good example would be the. The Temple of Cormier Heart, where the fastest way to do it is to heal the is to heal the sick people with the bandage with like the medical kit. Um, you can do the heart in like five minutes doing it with that, but it takes like some new not nuance, but it takes maybe a minute or two to figure that out. And I don't know if you like some people have really short attention spans and might get <laughs> sick of that and throw it away and be like, can I kill stuff? And then yeah, it'll take them a long time to do the heart. Like you said, like if you just read what to do and you do it, you can and you do tr kind of trial and error. You can figure out the fastest way to do it pretty easily. But there are a lot of players out there who won't even bother that much. Yeah, honestly, the mo the the times I'm having the most fun is when I have that short attention span. I mean, it, it happened last night once again, helping one of the guildies with uh, hero points. We're like, okay, we're gonna go after hero points, and all of a sudden we're trotting along. It's like, oh, someone help over here. Like, I I remember a lot of times that's how we used to play as a guild in or it's like okay we're gonna go fight you know hit hit all these things and all of a sudden we were just like 10 minutes later we're halfway across the map going what were we planning on doing like we just followed an event chain like and i i, I agree qed it, the it's the problem with the people mostly it, it kind of stems back to 
uh, mm-hmm. what was it? Halloween, the first Halloween when they were like, it, it wasn't part of the Halloween thing, but they were like, we had more events. They didn't tell us where they didn't tell us, you know, they sprinkled them all throughout the map, but because people weren't spoon fed, these are the new map. These are the new things. It sure. The people that read the patch notes probably saw it, but more than likely no one else ever noticed it. And then that's mm-hmm. kind of when they started gearing towards more living story and basically holding your head there going, look, new stuff. <laughs> like, so I, yeah. I, I personally, for me, I just that's never really needed hearts. And I just feel that it's blocking doing any, like, especially daily. <laughs> well, and it's not like, it's not something like everyone can do a heart, right? Like it's not something that's stopping anyone from doing anything. Um, it's just a really tedious, t- uh, thing in your way in my opinion if you're just if you're just like oh i need to get that 25 gold thing from the griffin vendor oh my god i gotta do the heart like that's the at the end of the day that's all it is okay hmm. interesting but uh he wants to know our favorite hero point that's um, actually really hard none of them yeah. really stood out like hero points didn't really stand out in this um, pretty much yeah, that's that's kind of my problem is since I had a lot of the my profession things, I haven't really hit the hero points all that much. I started to with like I said, guildies, but um uh, yeah. I guess as a placeholder, I guess the brand the branded pyramid was an interesting one. It wasn't yeah, it was, an encounter, but uh yeah, it's a good locale. Yeah, because oh, like most about of the ma- hearts. Are we including mastery points in that? Because I was I, thinking just hero points. Yeah, that's well. They brought up the uh, uh, chef one, the cooking one, which. Oh, oh! If you're talking about mastery points, um, I would say the one that gave me the most nostalgia was the one in Crystal Oasis, where you had to put on, you had to play like a uh, light up the. What's it called? You guys know what I'm talking about. Back in Guild Wars 1, if you want to use the teleporter. Oh, the, tele- the teleporter one. Yeah, that was yeah. a good one. That was a good yeah. one for me. I don't like funny, that one for nostalgia. When did, yeah, when I did that in the uh, in the playtest weekend, I tried it like three times, and I failed it every time. And then when I did it going through Path of Fire, it was really easy the first time. So I guess I just sucked at doing it that first day I tried it. But yeah, that was yeah. a good one because of the nostalgia. Um, I like the I like the gin and the bottle in Crystal Oasis. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you find the bottle in the sand and it's got a gin in it. Those neat. That sh- that that, that chef one can be kind of annoying, but but it is good. like that one. That one is not so bad once you figure out how it works. Like you just got to throw the stuff. The main thing that sucks about that one is that he moves. Like if he didn't move, that one would be really easy. But since he moves, you're like you're ready to throw the thing, and then he starts going somewhere, and you're like, oh, oh my god, yeah, I just got that tiny little timer. I just wait till he stops moving, and then I throw it at him. Yeah, no, don't throw it at him while he's moving. You will miss. <laughs> like, just wait till he stops. Yeah. The best thing is when he's like, "Where are my coconuts?" and he's standing at the coconut barrel, and you're just like, "Dog, <laughs> grab him your damn self!" Like, <laughs> oh man. Did you? Um, oh wait, no, that's a spoiler. I won't say. Uh, uh, oh, I think I know what you were talking about too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of other mastery points that are a lot of fun. Um, da, 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 da. Most of them are just charge ups, like just mastery insights. That you yeah. There was some encounter. The, the armor scavenger hunt was kind of interesting in Elon Riverlands for the Sunspear. Yeah, I just actually just completed that. That yeah. was actually interesting. I didn't think they would be master points like that. Mm-hmm. That actually brings it about. I, I kind of wish they did a little bit more of that because it promotes going around the map. Like like playing? Yeah. And, and yeah. Ex- more, more exploring than playing, I would say. What I wouldn't mind is if they gave master points for like event chains. Um, like there are some more obscure event chains that chains that would be kind of cool if you got a mastery point for doing. Because yeah, like while I liked that I got all my mastery points super fast, and it's like oh now I never need to hunt them again until raids or living world mm-hmm. comes out. 
um, it was pretty like it was pretty pushover to get your mastery points in in POF. Yeah. Well, I'm. I need to do. I still need to map complete in order to get some mastery points. I think I'll be a little bit short for Griffin, so I'll have to do some of the other map achievements to get some masteries. But I'm not overall worried. Yeah. Um, oh, I like the riddles. The riddles in Vabby. Those are good masteries. Oh yeah. Yeah, like I thought those were kind of because like they're multiple choice, so you can usually get the right answer. But they're yeah. like they're they're interesting little you know I'm talking to a gin is fun yeah. stuff. I, like, I do like I love how much they included the gin in the expansion. I didn't think they'd include them that much to be perfectly honest. That's true. I didn't really think about that. And they yeah. look very different. Nice. But uh, yeah, I mean that's Guild Wars too though. We do the they go ham with the redesigns. Yeah. I, because uh, the the reason I like the riddles is just because I don't want to get it wrong. I want to get it right the first time. Otherwise, yeah. I feel like there's a be a penalty. So I'm like really thinking about it. It's like, yeah. If you get it wrong, I think it does like a negligible amount of damage to you or something. Like yeah. you'd have to work really hard to fail one of those <laughs> one of those mastery insights. Yeah, I got it one wrong once. It's like, oh, just try again. It's like, oh, okay. Did you do the one in the the one in the desolation where I had to kill the forged enemy types with the gun? Yes. Yeah. That, that was kind of cool. One. Like that one was kind of cool, but it's also kind of annoying because like there was like one enemy type that I just couldn't find in that camp, and I was like, "Can I just?" I had to go like way far away from the camp to find yeah. that last enemy type. Yeah, me kind too. I think they because uh, the where you get that gun. If you go south towards the path, if you take the path rather than just port somewhere random, you actually find all the mobs that you need to kill. Because mm. for, for I those think I ran off in the wrong direction with the gun. Yeah, I did too. For those yeah. who don't know, that mastery is that you have to kill eight different forge mobs in order to complete the mastery. So mm. there might be like that two or one mob that you're missing. It's like, which one is it? So I'm just killing everything till I get it. Yeah, as far as insights that I liked, just like creativity wise, there's one in Desert Highlands where you have to jackal portal into an urn, like a giant urn that's like studded with amethyst crystals. Yeah. That was a pretty cool mastery insight. That was also good too. Yeah. Mainly because I was trying to figure out how to get in there without having the jackal mastery for like 10 minutes until I was like. <laughs> I'm gonna need the jackal mastery. <laughs> yeah, I need mean, like I need the skimmer one too. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about Guildhall. I don't know uh, anything about it. I haven't really had a chance to claim it, so if you know. Um. You or... Yeah, I claimed it on Monday. I think it was. Um. So, so it's it's pretty similar to like the other ones, but you uh for this one there are different. Uh, mob stacks and you have to kill the bosses at the same time in order to progress so it's it's pretty much the same thing you have waves and you have to walk run to different areas in order to complete it which is a little better in this one because most of the area uh, most of the guild hall in this area is flat so you don't necessarily have to glide to different locations and you have mouse. Um, yeah, you need you need your mounts in order to get to the area a lot faster. But uh, it was pretty similar to the other guild hall claims, except that you just have to kill the bosses at the same time, which is very interesting. It's a lot of fun. That's good. And the guild hall is yeah, pretty nice. The, yeah, it's pretty cool. I haven't been yeah. inside it yet. Uh, b by the way, all your decorations, if you don't remove them, they'll stay in the same areas. So we had like this sab area up top in Maven, <laughs> and it just stayed there. When we actually claimed it, and we're like, uh, we we actually used our mounts to get to it. It was just like in the middle of the air, so that was actually awesome. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So we have to, you have to replace all those. But. Have did you guys talk about the bounties while I was gone or no? Because I think that's probably another. We did topic. Not. Um, so it seems like if you if you don't know in the new areas you have bounties in kind of the, each of the like outpost towns. 
uh, kind of the major ones. You usually have like a like three bounty boards, and basically they work kind of like I would say on the difficulty of probably some of the guild bounties, but they now have a nice well a, a nice feature uh, where it kind of randomizes your kind of randomizes their special abilities which you can kind of read underneath their bar and sometimes you can get stuck with ones that are not so great which if you remember back to like Diablo and stuff like that that tended to be a problem there so I mean what are you guys thoughts on the bounties I I uh, every time they have a bubble over them that means I cannot use I can't like use rifle or pistol the entire time because I have to go into melee to get the buff we, uh, I should say. So the bubble means you cannot hit them from range. You have to be in melee, or you have to go inside the bubble, hit them to get a buff that will allow you to hit them from range, go back out, use your range, and when the buff expires, you have to go back in and, and get the buff again. That was so annoying because I couldn't just stay range the entire time and, and use my rifle. But um, And some of them could get a little ridiculous. For those of you who played Diablo, you kind of understand. We're going to go with this next because the uh, the the arcane. I'm going to call it arcane because those hit like trucks. The, the beams that go in like turn and circle, those hit like trucks when they have that, and uh, it just brought me back to Diablo. But they're a lot of fun, I'll say. Um, I feel like. Some of the, the the bounties, people need to learn how to do them because when I pugged it, I, it was less successful. I did have a few successes, but more not so, um, especially with the legendaries. But uh, uh, in organized or guild groups, uh, we were able to clear things fairly easily. And I, I think that's going to be like anything, like with Tequadal, you know, and yeah, all the other ones. Like, eventually, you're not going to need like groups and stuff like that. You just kind of show up, and I think that's the case now. Is that it's harder to learn because you have your char- you have the character that's going to do its mechanics, but then these ever changing other things. So maybe people aren't like real like pinpointing what the mechanic of the boss is, and then the you know outliers. Yeah. Or, and I, I can understand it because, you know, you see a bounty, you see a champion. Oh, let's go kill it. You, you're not really focused on uh, what the mechanics are, per se. You're just focused on doing damage. But when you see, like, the enemy has a ring and then have arrows at the edges pointing inwards, you, you kind of want to focus on what that does, right? So um, there, there are a limited amount of mechanics for that a bounty can have which is nice so you'll eventually learn them all but um i feel like that's a learning curve people have to get used to as it were yeah i mean i i've only done a few of them um they're open world legendary boss i think some of our champions they're but they're open world bosses um they're fun it's fun if you want to go do a boss fight it's good stuff the mechanics are good i didn't I've failed, a few, like, because I've only ever done them just, like, seeing, oh, a group's doing that, I'll go do it. I haven't actually been taking them, like, off the bounty boards. But I have failed plenty of them, but I we we won a few of them, so. That's okay. something there, I would like to see, like, maybe if you join a group or something, there's an... They're challenging I mean, enough to where you should be semi-organized. Well, but I mean, you the ability to share a bounty, because they're all static on okay. each of the boards. Yeah. Like, well, well certain ones. Yeah. So it, that's the horrible thing. I always see someone's like, I'm at this one. I'm like, well, by the time I get to the bounty board and then to there, like, you don't, you don't have to take it from the, you don't, you don't have to take it from the board uh, in order to participate in a bounty. Well, no, but is the if board you want, just there to tell you what's going on? The board's to tell you what's up and where the location is. If you take it off. Okay. The board. So, so ne- okay. I, that was the one thing I was worried about because I saw the achievement like for Crystal Oasis where it was like do a bounty from each of the map the outposts, so you yeah. don't have to go yeah. there you first and pick it up. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to. 
You just if a bounty's up and someone says it's up, you just go to it. Uh, okay, usually. that's a little bit better. Yeah, that, you know that's. Um, what I think is most efficient if you're like in an organized group, you have one person. You have each bounty picked up by one person, so that you know you could tell where each of them are, and then you go to closest one, you go to next one, next one. And eventually, uh, if someone kills the bounty that a person has, they will lose it, and then you just go back to the board, and that person picks it up again, and, and when it's up, and then you can complete all the bounties that way. Uh, I think that that was the most efficient way of doing it, which was pretty nice. I'm kind of curious to see, like, maybe this will be a nice avenue for them to be like, we've introduced a new mechanic to like the possible pull of things. That way, that basically changes up the possibility of all the mobs on or you know all the uh, yeah. bounties on the maps so that'd be a cool way to keep it interesting and kind of like what chat was saying teaching people to constantly look at those you know uh modifiers and you know their yeah. bars what i would like is that if you're in a squad and people have picked up bounties you would see where those bounties are if you're yeah. if you're in the squad, I think that'll be very helpful. So that you're you're not all you all know where you're going, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that like fifty people at once in the squad aren't like, where's the bounty at when they join the squad? Yeah, you don't have to yeah. play follow the leader. Yeah, because then it gets kind of flooded. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've been experiencing because I was squatting up a lot to do the Griffin collections. And whenever someone joins the squad, they're like, have you done this, this, and this yet? What are we doing? What part are we on? And, like, the squad chat just rolls by, like, Twitch chat. Like, it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be a nice bonus for, uh, for especially squads or, or just parties even. So you can all see where the bounties are and you know where you're going next when you call it out. It's like, okay, we're going to this bounty. And then you can just quickly highlight it the direction where those bounties are and then he's like okay he's located there we're running there and you know it clear it gives a clear objective <laughs> twitch chat is doing, feels bad for twitch chat hey, i didn't say i said general twitch chat i didn't say talking script chat talking script yeah. chat is, is on point there you go we just hey. happen to be we happen to be on twitch though youtube's worse Oh man, <laughs> let's, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, any final thoughts on like the you know our feelings of the expansion stuff and um overall, I think this expansion is pretty solid. It has been a week. Um, I guess there's there's the the issue the possible issue of longevity over time because that's always a thing you have to look at. So um, I think bounties are a good way to provide longevity. Um, but we sh and uh, obviously you know collections and achievements and things like that. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm also interested to know when the living story will come out and if though be an episode before the end of this year because that would be yeah because we're kind of hitting that spot where it's like a dead zone first because we get like halloween and then winter's day well do you think they'll do um a new raid or a new living world first i think they'll do a new raid yeah so like what mid to end of november ish yeah um i would say early november if anything yeah, November. Oh. That's what I was thinking for a new raid. Late, late, yeah. uh, late October, early November. I hey, to this point, Chad. Probably not new dungeons. We might somewhere see new fractals, but I don't think anytime soon. I don't. Yeah, I don't think we'll see new fractal just yet. It might surprise us, but yeah, because they've got their release schedule for fractals is like maybe two a year. I think they don't have an official schedule for it, but yeah, it's. What they that's kind of the pace they've been going at, so yeah. No, I I thought this is this is definitely the best Guild Wars 2 expansion that's been ever been released. 
And that's, actually, I, I want to cap it. I, I do want to stress what Q. I do want to stress what QD is saying because I've heard a lot of like negative things of like, you know, how POF feels, and I I agree that people were way too spoiled from the hot heart of thorns meta loots. Cause... Oh, do bounties? No, no that's the thing. No, this X pack is very lucrative in a very gradual way. Like Heart of Thorns was all the loot at once because you do the metas. With this X pack, you've got more. You've got way more gathering nodes. If you're opening the chest, you get a ton of good materials from opening the chest. If you're getting the keys from the heart benders, um, on getting the keys from the piles of sand, like existing in these maps is going to be relatively profitable. But people are right in that there's not a super cohesive farm. But like Age said, if you do the bounties, um, the rewards can be pretty decent. So yeah, I, I don't think any of them are going to be big farms. But like, I don't think it's de I don't think anyone's dethroning silver waste over here. But like, you know, you can if you spend some time in these maps, you can make some money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I will say that I feel like Arena went back to their roots in terms of giving good content but also providing new things as well. And I think they did a solid job in that respect, in terms of story, in terms of the maps, in terms of things to do, in terms of loot. I, I think they did a pretty solid job. So, yeah, I think this expansion is pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, Heart of Thorns aside, it's, uh, it's a very good expansion. They hit the points that I care about most in MMOs, um, like I don't care as much about story. I care more about what, like what I said before, world building and fun gameplay and amazing environments for me to play in. Um, and I feel like they knocked, they hit a home run with all those. And then the story maybe wasn't as top tier as the content or as the rest of the content, but it was still very good. So that whole um, combining all those factors it's a the expansions on point guys it's yeah and i think awesome. i think you know leading back to like the thing that started the, all this is you know it being on the f mounts itself or being on the front page of reddit like i think with the expansion it should have been on the fr as in, in general been on the front page of reddit because i think they did an excellent job overall i mean i know you know we're talking about certain things where we're displeased but you know i being think it was making the front page of Reddit is I translates to more game sales than any ad you can buy. Like I guarantee, I guarantee it. That is that had to have worked some wonders for uh, sales, like in the short term. Mm -hmm. mm. Um. Yeah, I, I bet Mo is happy and all the other devs. But uh, oh, yeah. I bet NCSoft devs... is happy. Oh yeah. Speaking of the devs, uh, they were playing uh, this for for uh, their kind of guild chat on Friday. They were actually having some of the game devs that worked on Path of Fire play Path of Fire. Which uh, did anyone get a chance to watch it? Oh, it was on Twitch on Friday. It was kind of yeah, yeah, during working hours. Yeah, I didn't get a chance. Sadly, I did oh. hear that Mike Z was organizing people's inventories. So I did see that. a tweet about that. I did hear a story about, um, which is hilarious, that during during the live stream, one of the I think it was bounties bugged with the dev that was that worked on those, at like playing, and the great part was they they instantly just were like, you know, start started like be like trying to figure out what the bug was, but they're like just keep playing, just keep, like you can you can figure it out, you know, but. So, you know, it it's great that it's like, you know, even even while they're trying to put on a show, they're willing to, you know, uh fix the game. Sure. I mean they're not they're they're devs first, you know, in this scenario, which I think is awesome. Yeah, well and to address what um Ada O seven is saying in chat, uh, they said they are they were that sh there was a lot of chat in the Guild Wars two stream, but they weren't answering any of it. Um Due to the fact that they can't talk about a lot of stuff, that's probably why they're not supposed to interact too much with chat when they do something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about the... Something uh, slipped. And I was going to say, I don't know about the makeup of this one, but normally they usually have someone 
else looking at the chat and then yeah. relaying it to them. So yeah, because you know, if they're trying to interact with chat live, um, they they're gonna have like a team of PR people off camera going, no, no, stop. Like <laughs> it's a it's a disaster. So that's why they don't interact with chat when devs do streams like that. Yeah. yeah. If they have a Q and A session, they'll have someone pull out questions and like so that you know they're not put into a corner about answering certain things, and they'll relay it to like whatever board or something that they have. So true, yeah. it, it was out of the ordinary from what they normally do, which is kind of like you know not a more hands-on thing, but. Um, you know, I, I'm sure they kept some aspects the same, which more than likely I'm guessing would have probably been like where they had someone else pulling the stuff from the chat. Oh, this is a random question, but is there a Choya tonic? Because I would have, I would have tried to find the devs, and I would have just followed them as a Choya the entire time. I would actually be surprised if there wasn't a Choya tonic. There should. It feels like an item that should exist, right? If it yeah, isn't, I it's going. Chat saying yes. I was gonna say if there isn't, oh, there's a pinata choya. Okay. Thank Which, you, chat. I will get that for trolling purposes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I remember a the casino one. Casino coins. Oof. I got yeah, work to do. That <laughs> hey, that's a meta. That's going back to the whole meta thing. That that is, uh, unleashes a pinata or yeah, pinata choya at the end. If oh, you really? Yep. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, wow. Oh, I think chat was saying earlier, too, that each of the new maps does have a kind of a meta, but a lot of people just don't know what it is. Like, so the, nobody participates because the word's not really out about the meta events and these new maps yet. But I imagine, like, they're not map-wide like the hot ones. They're probably more like the living world ones where it's kind of... Under the or radar. like you said, the core one where it kind of takes over a portion of the map. So you a can portion, still, yeah. Which mm -hmm. I, I do like that. Yeah, I know. I If you're going to do a meta that way, power to you. Like, I like doing it that way. I just don't like the hot way. Yeah. Which I think a lot of people are used to the hot way, which now we're having that issue of there's no metas. It's like, there's loads of them. Yeah. I, I actually did the casino one and I saw the treasure one. I didn't, I guess I didn't complete the, the casino one because... I did not see the giant piñata. Uh, I just thought it was a, a, an event that appeared at night or something. But uh, To answer oh, chat's cool. question, my stance on Choya, I think they are great because the one event in the Crystal Oasis, the Choya at the gate, they all just line up so I can get into fire, get into my tome, blow them all up, and with my build, more than likely, as soon as I'm done with it, one dies, so it instantly resets. I go back in and just start lighting back up. Love the Choya. <laughs> you love how they're targets. Yes, they all just group I, up I, at that gate. There's a different Here's thing. thing. Here's the thing. I thought that was building to a segue. <laughs> no, I was just answering Chad's question. That's, that, that's probably what I've been at, my favorite part of that, which, you know, funny enough, hopefully they don't ruin it with a patch. I love my Firebrand build. Don't ruin it with a patch. Speaking of patches... Mm -hmm. uh, a lot, of course, we talked a little bit about this last week be because it was day of, you know, there were a lot of, uh, pat, uh, patches, but, um, uh, we still seen some more basically of this week. I, I would say at least one a day. I mean, it seems like always near right near, uh, resets. I've always mm -hmm. noticed one if, if not more, but, um, a lot that have been like fixes the skills, story instances, uh, events, uh, some some bugs that I guess were unintended. But uh, for example, if you don't know this, you can get bigger bags now. You can craft higher than twenty slot, and apparently the higher ones are actually ascended quality, and they were apparently soul bound. Well, now they're account bound. So if you have a third, if you have one of these. Uh, set of bags which is a 32 slot bag which we'll definitely talk about in a second of how crazy that is uh, you can trade the soul bound bag into a merchant in the free city of Amun, uh, Amnun for a version of the same bag that 
does not bind to characters. So they are meant to be account bound. If you do have the old ones, make sure to you know correct that. But yeah. did you uh, did you craft one already, Age? I need. Uh, yes, I have. No, I haven't found the time to actually craft any. Uh, I heard it's expensive, but I'll do it eventually. At I least think for my main. We're saying around two hundred, depending on the price of the. Uh, I think runes or something like that. Oh, 300 someone's oh. saying. Okay. Here's the, here's the reason I actually don't have a huge problem with this. Um, yeah, 300 gold seems like a lot to pay for a bag, but you don't need 32 slot bags to play Guild Wars 2. Like, even if you're playing at the highest level. Like, we've been fine with 20 slot bags this whole, like, five years. You'll be fine if you don't have 32 slot bags. So this is just there for people. Like, it's actually great long-term progression, really. Um, because let, like you can always put more bags on more characters. So it's kind of like, I see it as just, if I ever run out of things to do, I can make me some 32 slot bags for another character. Like, yeah, yeah. the only reason I would want one right now is to have a huge invisible slot bag for like weapons and stuff. But otherwise I don't really see the need for it right now. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not something I'm like, Oh my God, I have to have that right now. It's like, Oh I'll get there. And just so people know how com like complicated it is, like you basically have now 24, 26, I believe 28, and then 32 slot bags. And like the 24 requires, I think, two, like 20 slot bags, and then some other stuff. The the 28 requires a 20, like it requires some of the previous oh, steps. Really? So it kind of builds upon itself and. So that's it's actually, like, it's like agony infusions, but bags fun. That's, uh, Twenty-four. That's actually that's actually pretty interesting because that promotes the use of making bags again. Because you need bags. bags are relatively cheap right now before the yeah. expansion. Movie. And there are a ton of ways to get twenty slot bags, so it's nice to have some more progression there, especially with um, Halloween coming up. So, so does it take 28, 28 slot bags to then make a thirty-two slot bag? I think it takes like two or something like that. It takes a couple. Yeah, I don't, I don't imagine they would do it that way. It would be hilarious, though. That would be mean. <laughs> but uh, chat asked a good question. So what is better, buying a bag or using the gem store for another slot if you don't have all of them already? I mean, it probably gem comes down cheaper, to... I think. Mm -hmm. Right now it's cheaper, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they'll even out for sure. And it's also time. I mean... Unless you're using it with gold, I mean, because theoretically, I bet 30, you could, yeah, I bet uh, it'll still be probably uh, over a hundred gold costs when things even out for a thirty-two slot bag, though. Hmm. I mean, it's just it's a big bag. Okay, chat's uh, correcting me on this. Twenty-fours require two twenties. The twenty-eight needs one twenty-four and one twenty-eight. Or oh wait, uh, oh, needs one twenty-four. <laughs> I was and, gonna say you yeah. need a twenty-eight slot bag to craft a twenty-eight slot bag. That's why I'm not a dev. Uh, <laughs> and then the thirty-two requires one twenty-eight, so you only need one of them. Luckily, later on, but okay, okay. that's cool. That's not bad at all. No. I'd like to think the person who did agony infusions like pitched this as a crazy system, and they were like, "We're gonna tone this down." And he was really welcome to the POF design team. Get on in. Shut the door. <laughs> Yeah, it uh, makes it less expensive to make than doing two and two and two. So, oh my yeah. god, that would get that would get so exhausting. Yeah, no, like this is a. I think it's a good long term goal for veteran for veteran players. Oh, uh, I played. I did play with the in game music during story. Yes. Yeah, I I want to get the full experience. I play with in game music. Yeah, so did I. Um. I always do that for like playing a new thing. I crank all the sounds all the way up to max everything. And I don't, I just, I shut the world out. <laughs> I experience it. It's good stuff. Yeah. Q QBD, this is what I'm kind of worried about now that they've introduced these bigger bags is like, it, you know, there's give and take to everything. And like, I'm even more worried because it's like, now we have those things, like those items that kind of come, kind of combine into one so you can easily salvage them 
and not have runes or anything, or you can identify them. It's like, what things are they going to make to take up our bag spaces that we don't know about yet? Like, right. Yeah. So they were like, you're going to need these. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys, um, do you guys salvage your gear unidentified or are you identifying all of it? I identify rares. Yeah, I do I rares and above. Rares. I identify. Is the, uh, is the material return the same if you salvage it unidentified? I'm not sure. I'm just doing it to get a Lonian weapons right now. Mm. I uh, I haven't noticed a big difference, but yeah, I don't. Now, I because I've been identifying all of it for the most part. Because from my experience early on, all you get extra is eyes of Cormier, isn't it? When you salvage unidentified. Um. I'm not sure, actually. Probably. That's, that's all I noticed, but it could be wrong. Because I, yeah, I salvaged like a pile of unidentified whatever, and I was like, all right, usual mats and some eyes of Cormier. Don't know if I want to continue doing that. <laughs> Chat saying they identify theirs. Because, yeah, you, I think you can be affected by magic. It says it's affected by magic fine. So. Oh, you, uh, yeah, you'll get rares and stuff out of blue and green unidentified uh, gear. So it, I, I've been identifying all of it. I, it's like, it's like opening back gear, basically. Yeah, I was we know doing you're it for that. rares. Yeah. Oh, okay, and you can also get stuff from the collections from them, so I guess that's a good way to do it as well. Yeah, that's but, why I've been doing it. Yeah, so it seems like identifying is the way to go, for right now, anyway. Um. Also, I, I know this was an issue I've seen throughout the week of, now we have access to the fourth stat inscription recipe for, it's the Spear Marshal one, because I think that was required for uh, one of the collections, or but it wasn't accessible in the game, which was an issue. So, yay, we actually get that. So that that was one of the bigger bugs of the week, I would say. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that that's available because I'm messing around with different stats right now for, like, Raid and World of World. So I, I'm trying to see what I could uh, make for different types of subs. So not that that's available can uh take a look at that mm -hmm. um yeah so you know you can you have all your map currencies and all that stuff and you can spend it all speaking of spending stuff let's talk about the gem store and always thank you to dolphy uh, check out dolphy.net so you can spend your gems more wisely what were you gonna say you mean the Cho you mean the choya store yeah uh, it basically was this week. Um, so you can see here from uh, one of Delphi's videos, and the link will be in description. We'll uh, try to throw it in the chat here in a second. But uh, first up, you see the Train Choya Hammer Skin, which is 600 gems, and it is a hammer skin. Some people were wondering if it was a staff. but And you also see in the video the mini Maraca Choya Pinata for 400 gems. That is a mini pet. But uh, first, let's talk about the Trained Choya Hammer Skin. What are your uh, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I'm gonna let Aaron go first. <laughs> guys, um, I don't like Choya. Um, I know I'm no fun, but whole I just holy holy hell are they trying hard with the Choya? Like, I feel like they're trying too hard with the Choya. They're like, guys, look at this mascot we came up with. Isn't it so cute? And I'm, I need them to stop because they're just kind of dumb. That's how they come across to me anyway. Welcome so, yeah, to my that, world with the Quaggan. I, I feel the same way about Quaggan. Shushadu is objectively the worst legendary they've ever produced. But yeah, the, none of the choice stuff works for me at all. I, I don't think I, they're, I thought, I don't think I they're thought funny. It was like, they're, just, they're just dumb. Like, I thought it was humorous, like, you, you just saw right there, if you're watching this, like, them doing, like, the hammer smash, and then, like, I, I kind of had a laugh, because the Choya comes back, and it's, like, it, like just got beat in the face, like, it basically got slammed on the ground, so, I chuckled from that, I I, st I still don't know, I don't see the cuteness, but, 
you know, to each their own. But I, I do find the hammer funny, but like we talked about last week with some of the black line chess stuff, I might spend gems on that over. I'd, I'd rather have the uh, jackal pup than probably the Choya hammer skin. But that's pers yeah, that's that personal. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if they actually put stuff you wanted to buy um, available for gems? Yeah. You'd almost, it's almost like they would make money if I could buy a thing that I wanted instead of a Choya hammer. Yeah. But the 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 thing is, I and I per, what I'm saying is I personally do not care for the Choya. A lot of people like the Choya, all right? They're gonna make money off of this item, so. Yeah, I've seen a couple people like, already with it. I do think it's humorous because it's just a Choya on a stick, just kind of like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna fight you, like. And it goes yeah, from that to when you bash them on the ground, that's kind of like ah, my face, like so. I don't know, it kind of works. But. Yeah, yeah. They'll people buy it. You'll see it. You'll see it all over the place. So enjoy your enjoy your money. Your I I just, I I don't buy minis, so I guess I'm impartial. But it looks kind of interesting. I guess that's the pinata from the event. I guess from the, the um. Casino. Well, no, you can actually get you can actually get a mini Choya pinata, but I th oh. in game. But this one has maracas in it. Oh well, in its hands. Uh, so, hey, just like in that case, instant buy maracas. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's from the same thing. I think it's also from the uh, uh, casino coins. Mm. But yeah, so oh, apparently also chat saying the hammer growls. So fun. It it looks like so much fun. Mm. But um, definitely worth however many gems it costs. What's it? Six hundred. Uh, for well, six hundred for the hammer skin, four hundred for the mini. Which, like, I, yeah, yeah, I'm not a mini person, but I mean, if people are a fan of it, do note that you can get a uh, pinata, uh, choy choya pinata mini from in game, just not with maracas. It's 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 kind of similar to the what well, we had the so dog that then had a outlaw dog. <laughs> But. So you're paying four hundred dollars, or no, four hundred gems. Sorry, four hundred dollars. That'd be alarming. Now you're paying four hundred gems for maracas. Yeah, yeah, kinda. I think it might be a different color. I'm not hundred percent sure, but yeah, for the most part. Excellent value. <laughs> Excellent value for money uh, there. Also, there is a Path of Fire survival package, and that is two thousand gems. It has a heroic recovery recover container, which has five heroic boosters three revive orbs and three repair kits also a makeover pack which has a one makeover kit and five transmutation charges uh the desert explorer kit has 150 trade contracts 15 trader keys five pieces of common unidentified gear and one treasure hunting kit also five teleport to friends and a black line key set which has 10 black line chest keys and one golden black line chest key which, for people that don't know, last week we talked about they introduced the golden black line key, which I think it, it's what above uncommon is a guarantee. Anything above uncommon? I think so. Which, if I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Isn't a guaranteed wardrobe unlock a rare drop from black lion chest? I think so. Yeah. As a rare item, so you're just gonna get some guaranteed wardrobe unlocks, fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um. You can get yourself a nice little dungeon skin for that golden black lion key. Uh <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm just looking up how much uh, black lion keys are. So they're five for four fifty. So nine hundred for ten keys. Uh, you get a golden black line chest key, so I'll say that's like 200. Um, so that puts it to 11. Uh, heroic boosters, I think, are what, like 150 or 100, let's say. So 500 revive orbs are like 50. Uh, so it's 
it's relatively like if you want some of the things that you would get off the gem store then you would buy the package because you just get extra trade contracts and stuff like that but yeah like the values there like you're paying for what you're paying you're actually getting a good deal it's just does anybody want any of this stuff yeah, yeah. I don't think so because personally I mean, for me you, like you're saying yeah. like I'd rather somehow pay for the uh, you know 900 or 1100 gems for the yeah. black lion and gold because I don't need any more teleport to friends I have a lot of birthdays um, I don't really need the current map currencies or the unidentified gear makeover kit I have loads of those and five chains mutation charges I wanted to see if anybody picked up on that five you can't even do a whole outfit thanks yeah Matt. like right. uh, <laughs> not, not, a, not a full like makeover veteran, veteran players at this point like we're rolling in transmutation charges like I'm not that about too. to spend money on them <laughs> and then the heroic yeah, so. recover container I mean heroic boosters okay but three revive orbs and three repair kits I don't need I mean, obviously, obviously, this isn't for veteran players. Though I think it's yeah. a package for, it's for people who just bought uh, Path of Fire, and maybe if you like, you just bought Path of Fire, you're like, hey, maybe this will help me in Path of Fire, and you just buy it. Like, it probably works. So, yeah, yeah. Basically, if you want a majority of the things in there that you can get off the jump store, that is in this bundle. Go for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's it's definitely nice. a deal if you're in the market for planning on buying all these or. You know stuff like that, but um, uh, oh, also I know it. I think they said a couple days ago. I remember someone mentioning a lot of the uh town like passes came back, like the mistlock, uh, the oh, what's the uh Divinity's Reach one, Royal Royal Terrace Pass. I think those came back. Um, so they're they're not discounted or anything. I think there's still a thousand gems for a permanent one. Uh, so you know, definitely check those out if you want those. But we've talked about them, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but last up, we have our community corner, and this week uh, was a Reddit post from uh, Apple Laugh. Showed, they showed off a version of their real life incinerator that they made, and here, here's what it looks like. And pretty freaking crazy, if you ask me. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I remember in A Net showing off the one that someone made, I think, for a cosplay that was the Juggernaut. Like that was impressive, but this yeah, one's this actually is, flames. <laughs> this is next level. Like this actually functions the way in the incinerator dagger would function like it's about as legit as it gets <laughs> and, yeah and chat and chat is bringing up a good point it, it is still a work in progress like I, i'm sure they still want to add like the fine it's, looking things to it but i mean it's also more of a two-handed sword than a dagger yeah. but yeah i'll give them a free pass because they freaking made incinerator like <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty high yeah, let's just like it's just a Norn. It's just a Norn size incinerator. Exactly. There you go. We're there not Norn, that. so that's what made Dale put it on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really. Yeah. That's a crazy yeah. level of home engineering, right there. And for people in chat, yeah, I just threw the link in if you wanted to go check out the Reddit post itself. But that's pretty freaking epic. Yeah. And yeah, incinerator is my first legendary, so. That's what just I, like, like, that's my ultimate question. What are you gonna do for that age? You gotta get it. Uh, like that? Like I, yeah, you, I I'll buy it off him if he's selling it. There you go. How much would you age? How much would you pay for that incinerator? Uh fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred? I would pay fifteen hundred for it. It's for it's probably about that's probably a it's, good uh good estimate. Actually. Yeah, it's probably a little under that, but mm-hmm. it's how much I'd probably pay for it. So basically, the gold the gold cost to make it you convert into just real money, <laughs> <laughs> like dollar dollar to gold ratio. That's right about is right about there. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, 
I I'd probably buy that if it was I I would have to probably never use it near like it wouldn't be a party trick or anything. But what would you be using it for? Like as a tool? Yeah, <laughs> what do you do? If I would have that as a solder, lighter. As a soldering tool. Nice. Yeah. I would have yeah. that as a lighter. Someone's like, oh, I, do you have a lighter? I, I, you know, I need a smoke. It's like, yeah. And then the place <laughs> like will be you buy, you buy this incinerator, you're like, whether I like it or not, I'm a welder now. That's my that's my new profession. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty cool to have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he's get he's gotten tons of offers for it already, but I doubt he's selling it. Yeah. Well, let's see. Unless he's he makes watching. like custom orders or something like that, but otherwise, no. I'm sure there's some kind of legal reason of, you know, pro- possibly selling a flamethrower. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you probably gotta yeah. have some sort of license to pedal whatever this would be classified as. Yeah, but you know, cool. Maybe maybe there will be details about that once it's fully, you know. Uh, developed because I, I know they posted a link to our YouTube thing, but it was I think to, like, you know, once the video is out, once it's fully made, they're gonna make a video on it. So, you know, definitely awesome. Um, but that is it for this week. And age, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Age Night Road. I have ideas for videos I've like at least three it's just that making them is going to be a bit of a pain I'm going to try to work on one tomorrow we'll see how it goes but um there's I'm also going to be doing some World Wars World and PvP this weekend so feel free to watch there and I should have the results of my boon share thief on YouTube sometime next week for sure so yeah there you go awesome and Aaron, where can they find you? Um, I'm on Twitter at Guild Wars Monk. Um, I'm on Twitch, uh, Guild Wars Monk, and twitch.tv slash guildmag also. I stream on there sometimes for guildmag.com. Um, we make a Guild Wars 2 magazine, fan-made magazine, a few times a year. So guildmag.com, twitch.tv slash guildmag, twitch.tv slash guildwarsmonk, guildwarsmonk on Twitter. Awesome. And you can find me at simply underscore Dale on Twitch and Twitter. And I would like to say personally thank you for the people that showed up uh, when I kind of did the uh, this went through the story. I understand you know people were avoiding spoilers, but I also do want to thank the people that didn't talk you know didn't spoil anything. You know, I know how tough it is. You know, and I know other games that's always a risk, but was able to play and talk with people as it progressed. It was awesome. Um, but uh, if you are popping at the very end, do stick around. We do do an after show. Um, if if you are if you want to watch this whole thing, uh, we do throw it up on our YouTube channel. Just search Talking Script. It's usually the first one that pops up. And that goes up Sundays at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you want to try to make it out for one of the live shows, uh, we do. We just search, uh, just go to twitch.tv slash Talking Script. And um, that goes up. We start that at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And, um, you know, join our community Discord if you want. Uh, if you're on Twitch, it's in the info section. If you're watching us on YouTube, it's in the description. And as always, we will see you in the game. Good night, everybody. <laughs>